Hi there, welcome. My name's Amanda Romania, and today I'm introducing to you my Akashic Records Oracle deck. And those of you that have had perhaps a session or come to work with me here in Sedona and look at your Akashic Records will know that we've been teaching that here in Sedona for many years. And I've been actually learning about the Akashic Records for probably now 20 years. And my journey started in Glastonbury in England when I was working in corporate world but also at weekends, learning spirituality and learning all the magical, mystical things that were there to be discovered. I was learning about my past lives, my present life karma, and it was during several journeys to Egypt and working in the Great Pyramids and the temples that I began to discover my gift as a librarian working in the Akashic field. And like everything else on the spiritual journey, it builds and builds and builds. And there came a point where I decided that I would create my own Akashic Records Oracle cards to assist in my reading and rewriting of people's Akashic Records and their sacred contracts. If like you, we beloved working with Oracle cards and there's so many amazing artists and teachers that have gone before us. And my go-to often was Oracle cards, working with angels and masters and crystals and elementals. And I actually looked at a deck count and I had nigh on nearly 50 different decks of cards. And they all had different purposes, and I worked with them at various different times. But it ended up during 2017 and to 2018 that I began to see that my readings needed more. I was actually working with a deck of 1,200 cards to work in people's Akashic records, understanding their contracts, their karma, their vows, their future timeline with someone, or their past life secrets from another lifetime as well. There's only sometimes so much that is a psychic medium and oracle that you can process. And I found that spiritually, I was becoming very burnt out with some of the in-depth channels that I was bringing through. So, Rather than doing many sessions in a day, I was limited to very few. And at this moment, as we're stepping into this new age of Aquarius, what I was finding was we need to get people in alignment with their spiritual programs, clear up that last minute karma, and also establish where their Akashic records can work for them and with them. Like I said, I ended up with this enormous deck of nearly 1,200 cards that I was having to carry around with me. And one day I just said to my guides, can you help? If you can just give me a deck that can work with this, I will be so grateful. And like it always does, within 72 hours, the thoughts had started to process. And I began to develop the Akashic Oracle deck that you're seeing that I'm working with now. What I love about the deck is that it actually is created from my personal experience. I use it every single day with readings. And this doesn't matter whether you are a beginner, intermediate or advanced. What I found is that you can work with this deck in the way that is most appropriate. And in the next section of this video, I'll be giving you various different spreads and techniques that I use as a practitioner every single day. What I actually created with this was 44 key cards of things that I bring through in the Akashic Records. And these are the cards in themselves. I wanted that gold frequency. I wanted that light to bring through from central sun to bring that high vibration energy. And this work that you have got here is actually connecting in through many, many different dimensions. 
I've often said this to people, but then we've been working with this deck for quite a while now. And the main thing people have said to me is, Amanda, it's live and it kind of works. And the reason is because I'm working with it. It's dear to my heart. I'm activating these cards every single moment. And even in my astral sleep, I think I'm working with them as well. And what this means is when I believe in something, when we connect into something connected through the Akashic libraries, we're giving it keys and codes that we're passing on to those using the deck. The deck is made up of a number of different cards. Um, for instance, we have the karmic board, which I use when I'm bringing through clearing and justice and enlightenment for certain things that we've not seen. I use the throat chakra card so often with people to clear up their past lives and give them a voice, especially when I'm working with the Oracle School training. Um, most of us have had our voices closed over many lives when it comes to spiritual teachings. Ideas and inspiration. What can you bring through in that day that as a spiritual teacher you can help with? Or you might even be looking at your future life contracts. There's some deeper and some darker cards, of course, that are in this deck. Nothing to be worried about because they're all in the Oracle libraries. And sometimes you will have curses and contracts that you need to look at and clear. Doesn't mean you have to relive them, but having an awareness, having an understanding, what that can literally do is shift it from being like this to being like that. And in that way, we're closing the record, we're clearing the karma. Remember, in the Akashic records, we can't change events. What was said, thought and done actually occurred and happened but the emotional understanding, the spiritual interface of it can be released and changed. So this deck opens doorways to that. And there's a little book that goes alongside this. Um, it opens up and it will give you little aspects and thoughts to have. But the reason that I don't write essays and big stories into this is because what I'm actually wanting you to have is that psychic awareness experience. And when we go into our mental reading the lines, we lose the intuition because the brain is focusing on, well, this is what it does say. So using the book, but using it as a guide that will stimulate thought and action can really create something that you can work with within the Akashic Records. So in the next part of this, like I said, we'll be opening up some various spreads. So maybe just take a moment to think of something that you perhaps wish to work on in the Akashic Records today. So welcome to the Akashic Records Oracle Cards. And what I'm going to show you now is a few of the various spreads that I actually use in sessions every day with clients and students. So the first thing I do is I have my cards with my left hand. I'm just going to clear the energy. Um, I've got some sacred space around me. And then I'm going to open the box, take out, the little booklet and I'm going to take out the cards and just I just place them out and then I'll just pop this here and I've always got the book here just in case I need it for reference again put some energy and some clearing into the cards and then I might do a little shuffle You'll notice how careful I'm handling the cards. And the reason being is that if you kind of shuffle them and kind of what I call deal them out like you would do with playing cards, what actually happens is you bend the card 
And what that can do is it can take away some of the positive energy that you've been working on. So I really advise to keep them in beautiful condition and not to break their spine. You can cut them in various different ways, should you choose. But I always find that they work like little magnets themselves of how they're going to bring that energy and the messages through. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an overview spread. And the overview is something that I will use with clients to give them some general information. It really helps you if you can work with intention so just focusing on your highest. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the records what it is, the key records that we should be working on. The message that they're giving me is focus on the future lives. So that may be how I'm affecting the future, not necessarily just the future of me, but this can be the future of my next lifetime. And what I've learned is that with the future lives, you can actually impact and change things now. Then over to the left side, the relationship area, it asks me to look at my relationships with wealth and abundance, not just money, but it can also be energy, connections, also pay attention to the number of 44. So when I see 44 or 44, I'll be paying attention in relationships. And then over to this side, I want to know in career and destiny. And they tell me to work on my solar plexus, which is my empowerment or how I'm empowering other people. So this is a general spread. This is the signature card. This is the relationship area. And this is the career and destiny soul purpose area. Obviously, there's other things that go into an Akashic reading, but as you can see, this is where the messages are building up. And depending on your intention, you might have different questions that you want to ask. So in this point, I want to ask a little bit more about the destiny area. And I want to know from the Akashic field if there's anything I need to be conscious or careful of. They say to me that following the path to help others through their shamanic initiations. And is there anything else that I need to know connected to that? Also helping others with their sacred contracts. So this has given me future life. If I can impact people with empowerment, shamanic initiations and sacred contracts, then I'm doing a lot of the work that I was here to do. And I'm making a difference in the future timelines. I'm a little bit wanting to know about this wealth and abundance with relationships. And what it tells me is that I should use this with sacral chakra, nurturing, safe, sacred space. So these are other things that I need to be aware of with my wealth and abundance, how I maybe actually take care of myself. Now you'll notice that intuitively I'm laying some of the cards out and placing some of the cards. I do that from my intuition. And the reason being is that future lives, Kashuk records, empowerment through shamanic initiations and sacred contracts, it flows like a record, like something that you might write down in your journal or when you're doing your Akashic records. On this side with relationships, because I've laid these two cards together, it's telling me that intuitively they're very much linked and they go hand in hand. So I'm going to now, if there's anything I need to clear from vows of poverty perhaps, or things that have been holding me back in the Akashic Records connected to wealth and abundance, I now create sacred space with that. And that's how the record can sit. Anything else about future lives? Well, one more card. They tell me to address the future lives with wars and battles. Now, I don't want to leave that card just as it is. I want to know what I need to do to help with the healing and the clearing in the future. And they say, bring in inspiration and wisdom. 
And as you can see, I've placed the card over the top, which means that we're clearing those wars and battles. And that could be on a personal level, a community level. It may be me even just sending positive action and energy out into the world. But this is how we can do a general overview spread. Also pay attention to key things that you might see. Um, like I'm paying attention to the rose here, which means bringing the rose frequency through or the rose frequency is very strong. That may lead me to think about Mary Magdalene. She often comes through when I see roses. I'm also drawn to the numbers, 33, sacred space through the sacral chakra and Christ consciousness. So if you can see, this is more than just laying out a few of the cards. Now, I'm just gonna place these away. And the next spread that I want to do is a one that's connected to the ancestors. With the Akashic Records, we carry a lot of the information of the ancestors. And sometimes we need to clear those seven generations. Now, how I do that is interesting. We got the ancestors card straight away. This is the significant card. And if you notice, I'm working the other way around and what I'm actually doing is I'm starting this way and working up the table. The ancestor card represents you. And then we'll go parents and grandparents. So we go through anything in the lineage to clear on the mother's side. Anything in the lineage to clear on your father's side. And then we go up the next level to the grandparents, the Akashic Record message there, and the Akashic Record message here. Again, depending on the questions or the intentions, but if I was reading this for myself, the messages that I would receive would be that I'm here and actually I'm an only child, so I'm one clearing for my ancestors. What I'm doing for my father's side is I'm clearing records of religion. And religion doesn't just mean a certain religion. It can also mean beliefs and views of the world. My grandparents, I'm helping bring through the messages of truth and justice. And if there's anything that needs to be cleared on that line, then I can do that work for the ancestors as they sit. On my mother's side, what they're asking me to help her with is the chakra cleanse, clearing, flushing things through, rejuvenating, bringing light and life to the chakras. And then with my grandparents on my mother's side, it's about working to clear anything from the children or bringing through support from them or messages from them for the children in the family or the line. Anything else significant that the ancestors wish to communicate with the Akashic Records is they say, yes, we're here to help with clarity. And in this way, I'm able to communicate with my ancestors and do any work, prayers, meditations, or even some regressions into the Akashic Libraries to help work with that. So this is how I would work with an ancestral spread. And you can go back as far as you need. You can even go back to the seven generations. Okay. The next spread that I also want to show you is a spread connected to vows and contracts. Curses, those aspects. And you could do this for yourself or you could do this for another. I want to know what they want me to know. They want me to know that this is to do with cosmic lives. So that can be things on this planet or off planet, but there are things that are affected by the stars, the planets and the universe around us. They want me to know that I'm creating sacred safe space and they also want me to know 
that the information is stored in the holes of a mente. But if you look here, we're seeing the stars on both of those. So this would say that I'm working with other aspects of beings from other planets, from other universes even. And how I'll create that sacred vow and contract with this is I hereby understand that the cosmic lives, cosmic citizens are here on the planet at this time in our own DNA and spiritual selves because I feel that a lot of us carry that stardust within us. I'm here holding sacral safe space and I'm also helping them connect through the halls of records to understand their lineages of where they came from. And so it is. Let's see if there's another one. Ah, creative writing. Totem animals. Crown chakra. With this one, I hereby understand that I'm bringing creative writing forward messages from the animal kingdom, the animal world, but also the community that works with me, bringing through consciousness to connect and work with the crown chakra. So what I'm starting to see here is clear records, contracts that are in my Akashic field that are being pointed out to me now. And you could do this spread. You could say, oh, this is work for January. This is work for February. And what you find then is it's a very easy way to bring your Akashic records up and work with that. Now, what I might also do is I might do a release and let go. What do they need me to release and let go of? Then again, they're bringing through certain messages. And work with the angels, but it's all about the wings and taking flight here. And then creating inspiration and wisdom. So if I tune into my heart, what I feel that I need to release and let go of is my fear that I might not have a connection, that I might not be working sometimes with the angelic forces. And I have to release and let go of that. As I do so, the angels step in and help me release and let go. And then I am in tune with the infinite, with inspiration and wisdom. And anything else they want me to know? That they're here helping me lift the curses that no longer serve. Like I said, we've got, you can do this on a monthly, you could even do this on a daily. And you can work with these cards in many, many different ways. What I might then do is say, okay, I might take a pendulum or I might tune in and say that, well, some of these curses may be held in the halls of a mente. And I'm going to release that with my crown chakra, my knowingness. And in that way, I can then write about this. And in this way, I'm bringing the heavens into a safe space of inspiration and wisdom that comes through in messages that can help us all. Because this card doesn't just mean totem animals, it also means community or finding your tribe, finding and helping people that are needing your messages. So if you're guided to move the cards around, remember, this is a live deck. We've not really worked with anything like this in a very, very long time because we've been used to traditional spreads. So I really encourage you to work with it for your highest, the way that you feel guided and the way that you can connect with your heart and know that it's working in your Akashic field to move things through. So sometimes doing the spread and then leaving for 24 hours, maybe do some journal work, maybe see what shows up in your emails or in your daily activities, because sometimes those miracles are just a breath, 
a thought and a moment away. Thank you. So welcome back and thank you so much for joining me and I hope that you were able to follow along with the spreads with the oracle deck that we were using and you might have even had some new ways or some new thoughts of how you can use those techniques yourself or you might even come up with your own unique spread. Remember you are just remembering all of your spiritual gifts and these are just tools that help this along the way and this has worked for me i know here in sedona several of my students that are professional psychic readers they actually use this deck and they enjoy working with it so i hope that it's of benefit and can support you if you're watching this for the first time and you haven't purchased this deck, um, you might want to look at our Etsy store, which is Atlantis Sedona. We also sell on Amazon. You just kind of Google my name, Amanda Romania, Akashic Therapy, Akashic Records. You'll see some of the books that I've written, but also you'll see a link to where you can purchase the cards. Or you can email us direct amanda at amandaromania.com and with that email i'll be able to send you the link or we can even do the shopping through what we call our shop portal which is atlantis here in sedona if you're wanting to know a little bit more and you'd like me to perhaps mentor or coach you in working with the cards or with your spiritual practice and work very easy Go on my website, www.amandaromania.com, and you're able to see where I have session availability that you can book online. And if you can write to me and you use that session time, whatever way serves you in your highest. And if you're thinking, wow, I'm kind of really getting into this Akashic Records, I'd like to know about the Akashic Therapy, then there's also my program that we do, which is the Akashic Records, which takes you through and does the attunements and does the activations into the garden sanctuaries to finding the libraries of light. And we cover all of the different record houses. We cover past lives, present lives, future lives, the life between lives and the cosmic lives. So you're able to go into the records further and farther than we've ever been able to do before. My main mission here is helping people open up to their spiritual gifts and their hearts within. As a librarian, I know the more that we can help people and move the things that no longer serve taking them into these new paradigms, working with higher dimensional energy, it really helps us. We're all in this ascension program together, I guess. And we're all here on earth at this moment. And each of us has a very different individual way. I help many people, but I love it when people can actually help themselves. So if this work through the Akashic Records Oracle Cards can help you and be of service, then I'm absolutely delighted. And if we get to meet someday in Sedona, then that's an added bonus for me. If not, just sharing some time with you today. And please, I can't necessarily read all of your records when you write into me, but I can certainly give feedback, assistance, and maybe some overview to give you some techniques so that you can read your Akashic records for yourself. So from my heart to yours, thank you so, so much for joining me. Be blessed, be safe, be happy, and namaste.